All right, we've got a real treat for you on this Thursday evening. Tommy Walsh is on the line. Good evening, Tommy. Hey, good evening, Nathan. I good was, to be back. I was just saying off air that uh, one of my resolutions was I was going to refer to you as Tommy Welsh for the year because for, for years around off the ball, I've been getting stick for not pronouncing it right because it may always say Walsh. And then as I mentioned that to you, you said, no, it's actually Tommy Walsh. Yeah, well, no, you can call me anything. Around well. local and Welsh, <laughs> up in Dublin, Mayo, Walsh, so... You can call me what you want. Exactly. Well, I think of the uh, Mayo hurling manager, Derek Walsh, and I'll always refer to him as Derek Walsh. And speaking, I'm, I'm going with this, speaking of Ballyhonus, uh, my hometown, and one of the reasons you're on is because the lads down in Ballyhonus in the hurling club are organising a brilliant fundraiser over the next while that you're supporting. It is Hurling for Hope. Uh, you can donate now on idonate.ie. Just search for Hurling for Hope. Um, what they're doing is they're going to solo a hurling ball from the Mayor Ross Common Hospice in Castle Bar via Clamaris, Ballyhonus and Castle Ree, And then they're going to finish at the Mayor Ross Common Hospice in Ross Common, which is 100 kilometres. All this happening 23rd of March through to the 26th and most importantly of all it is a vital fundraiser for two very deserving organisations the Mayo Ross Common Hospice Foundation and the Irish Motor Neuron Disease Association and you're throwing your full weight behind this Tommy Yeah that's right uh, Nathan I suppose the Mayo Ross Common Hospice Foundation and the Irish Motor Neuron Disease Association it means I suppose every you know fundraiser means uh, so much to, to different people but when they're local I suppose you can see the benefits of, of it even greater. And um, when when it's for the local charities, I think people will get behind it and they'll throw, like, there's, there'll be GA people, there'll be celebrities, there'll be the local families, they'll all be chipping in and they'll be doing that big solar run. There'll be no dirty cornerbacks coming in trying to take them all off you on the way. So Are you we sure? Promise. <laughs> well, we might throw in Keith Higgins or something like that. You obviously yeah. haven't walked the road between Claire Morris and Ballyhonis too often. <laughs> no, no. Do you want to tell me more? Well, I tell you, you wouldn't want to be walking... You'd, you'd want to hurl in your hand now if you were walking home from Midas Nightclub back in the day. <laughs> but you were around anyway, I believe it. <laughs> but yeah, it's for a great, for a great charity. So yeah. it's kind of trying to raise awareness as well, Nathan, and um, around Ireland. And hopefully people will go onto that website you just called out and they will donate. So all the GA world, while Ireland is a big place, the GA world is very small. And when you hear about um, fundraiser like this and so many people from, from GA clubs getting behind it, uh, I think everyone is, is prone to do so. So, listen, we'll log on to those websites and we will donate. And, you know, you wouldn't know who you'd see on the roads from Mayo to Roscommon around March. So I think it goes on for four days. We're going to solo 100 kilometres, would you believe? And from the 23rd to the 26th of March. So, listen, we'll ask people to get out there in numbers and um, support a worthy cause. It sounds like there might be a Tommy Welch special appearance. Yeah, I'll try my best. I was saying that to Frank. You know, when Frank called me about it, you know, there's a lot of times you can't get behind fundraisers, but definitely, listen, we'll try and go up there. Um, there'll be four days, I suppose. There'll be plenty of options. So I'll do my best there to get up um, if, if I'm around, you know. Well, Keith Higgins will show you a thing or two about hurling anyways, Tommy. Yeah, well, he played, I played with him in the Bank of Ireland. Um, mm. We play an annual match against the Army, Nathan. And, uh, you know, I was always looked up to him as a footballer. Like, he, he was tenacious. He gave it everything from the corner back. But... Uh, Hurling, he played wing forward that day for us and he got man of the match. Uh, I think the match was up in Athlone the same day, but yeah, he was brilliant. You know, he was brilliant and um, looking forward to, to, to seeing him, you know. Yeah, so again, it's uh, idonate.ie, search for Hurling for Hope and you can donate there and I'm sure we'll have lots more about that over the coming weeks as well. I think we're all just calming down after Sunday, Tommy and TJ Reid. Were you off your seat? Yeah. Um, I was watching it up in one of my friend's house. It was his 50th birthday, so he said we watch it uh, in style so yeah um, like they've done it so many times in the past Nathan uh, I remember Henry's first year as manager uh, with Ballyhale you know it was his first step into management and they were in the semi-final I suppose half favourites against Castle Comer and they were being well beaten on the day inside Nolan Park and uh, with time up Colin Fenley who was injured because I was behind the goal I saw him get injured after about five minutes of the second half and he was kind of told to stay on you might you know, win a ball or win a free. And t time just up, went out around half hour line, got in a hook or a block and flicked the ball away. Evan Shefflin came in as he was wing back the same day and came up and put the ball in the top corner, Comer out of the championship, you know, and they were looking for their first senior championship that year. And if they bet Ballyhale, there would have been a great chance for him in the final. That was the first of it. 
um, the semi-final last year against James Stevens. Not not this year now, but last year they did the very same thing. They were up by seven or eight points, the village, and uh, Bally Hale came back. Like they do it time after time again. Like the under twenty one semi county semi final recently, Owen Cody was playing and they were getting beaten again and last minute goal, Thomas Town had the game won. Last minute goal, bang. They did it against St. Rhinus. So it's not at more surprise with they seem to do it time after time again. And I think Nathan, it's not just that they never give up, they have the class to do it. Yeah. So when T J stood over that free, did you think this is only going to one place? Um, not really. Um, he's brilliant at placing the ball, but you know, DJ Carey probably would have been the man in Kilkenny for power, so he would have sizzled it like he had enormous power, enormous strong wrists. Towards DJ, while he's powerful in that, he would never be known for scoring, you know, 21 yard freeze, long range freeze, you know, from maybe 25 yards out the way we'll say, you know, Paul Flynn from Watford would have done it. You'd always give him a chance. TJ was more accuracy, I would have thought. But I think in the interview after it, he even said that he hadn't scored a 21-yard free for, was it, you know, in that kind of a match before. And as I was talking to someone the following day, he said, that's probably because Bally Hale are 10 points up in every match. He didn't have to do it. But, yeah, listen, it was a great goal. And it was, I suppose there were so many people on the line, maybe they, they got caught blindsided and powerful goal. But if you rewind even 10 seconds before that, Nathan, Joey Holden caught the ball from the half-back line. TJ caught the ball that came in. And he was being well marshalled all day and he caught it down around his knees as far as I could see from the pictures. So it wasn't just the the, the, pen, the 21-yard free that he scored. It was the catch leading up to it. It was everything about it. So, listen, he was a magician and I think he definitely is in the Eddie Carroll bracket, the Henry Shefflin bracket, the DJ Carey. Maybe, I suppose, you know, the three kings of Kilkenny forwards, if you go back, we'll say 100 years, Turin Laurie Marr, midfielder, JJ Laney, defender. They're the kings. We say we've had great hurlers, mm. serious, serious hurlers. But as regards to the, the, the top guys, the top five or six, I think TJ Reid is, is in that bracket without a shadow of a doubt. I don't think there's any debate as yeah. far as I'm concerned. And there ain't no bracket higher than that. Like that is some very high praise and still doing it at 34. When you think back to him breaking through, like he was part of that squad and I, I think on the fringes in 07, came off the bench in 08, and 09 was captain in 2010 and then firmly establishing himself from 2011. What are your memories of him coming in and being around the squad when he was when he was in his early 20s? Yeah, well, he was a magician from 17. When he was younger, he would have played a lot in goal and, uh, when he was maybe 14 on the minor teams, when he was too young probably to play out the field. So his hands were always magical. And uh, when he came on the scene, he was an absolute magician. Like, you know, he definitely went straight into the top bracket of fielders in the game even within that Kilkenny team who, who had great men in the air TJ could win the ball from in front or behind whether that was midfield, half forward line or full forward line and I think it all changed from I suppose to rise into the Eddie Kerr's and the Henry Shefflin's and the DJ Carey bracket when he got that injury against Galloway in 2012 um, his knee, I think he broke his kneecap mm. and that's when he transformed as a a physical, we'll say, uh, elite athlete in that sense for it. He always had the hands, but fitness, physical strength, mental strength, I think that all came And after that because he had to spend nine or ten months in a gym with nothing else. He couldn't go hurling because he was out with that injury. That was a nine or a ten-month injury. And came back in 2013, you know, it was still only kind of coming back because it was a difficult injury to get over. We didn't have a great summer. But from 14 on, Listen, he was unmarkable, really, whether the Kenny team was going well or not. And, you know, he always did it for Ballyhale, you know, and for Kenny, I just think after the 2012 injury in the, against Galway, he just transformed himself in the gym and has, you know, he's still doing it now at 34 years yeah. of age. Well, when young lads were coming in and around the Kilkenny squad, what were you looking for? Because I was listening to the football pod uh, yesterday at, with, with James O'Donoghue and Paddy Andrews, and James was talking about coming in as a 18, 19 year old, been around the Kerry squad for a couple of years, known he wouldn't be in the first team, but been thrown into training sessions with Mark O'Shea and Mark and Mark O'Shea. He said he wouldn't get a touch, like literally would not get a touch and quickly realised if I'm to be a part of this Kerry side, I need to get to a level where I can challenge a Mark or a Tomas O'Shea. So when young lads are coming in and around that Kilkenny squad, what, what were you looking for that would make them stand out and think, actually a couple of years time, this lad is going to be a big asset? Yeah, you're never thinking about a couple of years' time. You're thinking about probably 
the following week, get on the panel, get on the team. Um, so I suppose my own experience was going in. It was Charlie Carter I was marking, uh, John Hine, Brian McAvoy, Tots McAvoy. All, you know, stars of the club game, stars of the inter-county game, all stars, all Ireland winners, did it in big days. And I suppose at the start, to be honest, you're not able for it, really. Um, you know, you're getting well beaten. But slowly but surely, you start getting better as physically, mentally, I suppose your hurling just speeds up as well. Like, if you mark better players, you will get better. And um, slowly but surely, you go from thinking that you'll never even get on the panel to, I can do this. Suddenly, you know, I catch a ball or two here or someone gives out a hand pass. Like, this is where the big players are important. When you're young, like, you need someone to throw you out for your hand pass, get you into the game, build your confidence so that you know you can survive. So I think the first few years, Nate, and it's about surviving and getting your chance then. And suddenly it starts becoming easier. And um, especially when you're, when you're with the big players, if they're good leaders, they'll give you out the ball. They'll bring you into the game. You make a mistake, they'll blame some other player. They'll tell you not to worry about it. So that was my experience coming in from as a youngster. And I think we tried to do that then. The boys were brilliant. The Brian Hogan's, JJ Delaney's, they were brilliant to the youngsters. Paul Murphy, Owen Murphy, all these guys coming in. They loved them, lads, because they looked after them. They didn't see them the, themselves as, you know, because they had a couple of all Ireland medals or a couple of All-Stars in their back pockets, that they were better than the young lads coming in. They didn't wait till June, July, you know, gradually bring back your fitness and yeah. then we'll, we'll come on to the team take your guys places no they treat them with respect yeah it is insane what TJ Reid is doing with club and county so five All-Ireland club titles with Ballyhale already uh, seven medals if you throw them all in there with Kilkenny and heading to a final again against Ballygunner with Dean Mason uh, the goalkeeper for Ballyhale young lad like 2021 20, has never lost a game of championship hurling with Ballyhale, won every county title, every Leinster title, every All Ireland title that he's contested. Like that, that culture of winning. Like that's why that happened, I guess, with TJ Reid in the last minute. When you think of great teams, Fergie time, Manchester United, even watching Tom Brady last weekend, it didn't come off, but you always sensed something could happen because they've done it so many times before. Like that culture that they have right now in Ballyhale, it, 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 something you can't fake. Yeah, and it comes from experience, it comes from winning. And you see, when you win, win as a youngster, there's no pressure on you, Nathan. There's the pressure of playing well. That's always with sport. You're, you're, you, you want to be your best. You're driven that way. You don't want to lose one ball. You don't even want to lose a run in training. But the pressure of getting a title behind your name, that's not there for the Bally Hills. It wasn't there for Brian Fenton and those dubs, the Kieran Kilkenny's. It wasn't there, we'll say, for our Kilkenny team, the Kerry team of the golden years. So the Cork, will say, the great team of the Naughties with Sean Oak and the lads, they won early, Nathan. So when they got to an All-Ireland final or the Bally Hales, they get to a county final. There's no consequences for them of losing, bar the disappointment of losing that title. They're not wondering, will we ever win a county final? They have probably two or three of them in their back pocket. So it's just about winning the game. So that's what Dean Mason has. Like You take Bally Gunner going into the final, they're going into it saying, this could be our only ch chance of ever winning. Look at the hard road we had to take to get to Crow Park. Bally Gunner have won seven or eight county finals in a row in Watford. Look at the disappointments uh, that they're after having, you know, Herr Jung O'Keefe to score the, the goal, the last time, the two goals against Slot Neal. He was talking about it. Like, they're after going through losses after losses in the Munster campaigns. Now they're suddenly in an All Ireland. They'll be wondering, you know, with five minutes to go after two points up, hang on, hang on. So, Bally Hill don't have to think about that. It's just another match for them. I know it's an All Ireland final, but sure, they all have three and four All Ireland medals in their back pockets already. So losing won't scar them. Towards if you've never won it, obviously you can leave a big scar. So oh. I think it's the pressure, Nathan. All our club championship coverage and off the ball is brought to you by AIB, proud sponsors of the football hurling and camogie All Ireland club championships. You can check out hashtag the toughest for more. How did the uh, club season go for you, Tommy? Yeah, the club season last year. Ended in savage disappointment. We were beaten the semi-final by O'Loughlin Gale. So we had chances to win it and maybe a bit more experience for us at that stage. You know, we hadn't been there in, since 2004. And, um, you know, maybe we would have got over the line. And um, that's where the experience of winning and playing the big days probably plays its part. So while we had a good year to get to a semi-final, you know, listen, it's not a good year when you're beaten. So... It's all about us to bring on the young lads and stay building and building and um, that's what we'll be trying to do this year. You're still loving it? Still loving it, yeah. But listen, I'm not sure what I'm going to do this year. I'll be going back hurling, but... Oh, 
will I be playing senior? I don't know. Is this the Tommy Tommy Walsh retirement interview? Oh no, no, I'm not retiring. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never retire. No, I'll be going back training and all that. Right. You know yourself when you get to I'll be 39 this year. So listen, we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how injuries go on that this year. But oh geez, no, I'll be playing for the next. Co- I said 40, so I'll be hurling till I'm 40. All right, right. right. Which team I'm on, I don't know. Well, there'd be a brave man to drop you now from the senior side, in fairness. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm busy at home now. I bought four chickens there at Christmas. So <laughs> we're, ch- we're, we're farming chickens, so I don't know if I have time for training this year. Uh, and uh, are, you, are you making cash out of selling the eggs, or what's going on? <laughs> well, are you willing to buy a few? <laughs> <laughs> the price so, is right. We played the w- <laughs> well, it's Finn is selling them, so he got them for his birthday. So we're flat out, we're up every morning putting them out and they're hard to put back in and it's our first time doing it so they're only starting to produce the eggs the last couple of days so hopefully now be the summer now it'll be they'll be hatching every day well listen free advertising a go-go here and off the ball for you so it could be a nice little enterprise come the summer Tommy please uh, God yeah we'll leave them at the gate and we'll, we'll leave the little see where it goes from there uh, an honesty box an honesty box exactly <laughs> uh, I, I know you're busy on the coaching side as well with the young lads in uh, Tullerone uh, one of your teammates is uh, at a slightly different level at the moment in Henry uh, preparing for the start of the league down in Galway and we're all looking forward to I think Galway against Kilkenny w- w- what's your sense of what Henry's expecting out of Galway over the next couple of years is it a a project to take a team without Joe Canning who are in a bit of transition sort of finding themselves and trying to change the culture there or do you think he's going in thinking I come in in All-Ireland with this group whatever the group is yeah he'll be going to win every game I would say Um, they were beaten you know be Dublin beaten well even though they they didn't have many of their starters from last year out but they were still well beaten so he'll know he, he has a lot of work to do there's a great buzz up in Galway. I know a few Gal- Galway people. There's serious excitement. And I think you go and look at any time Davy Fitz goes to a new county, he brings serious enthusiasm, enjoyment. The whole place gets behind him. Mick O'Dwyer will say when he left Kerry, he went to Kildare, he went to Leash, brought great success. Paddy O'Shea went to Westmead. So when a new manager goes to a, a new county, it does bring, especially in all that Henry has achieved, so I think he'll be going to win a, a league, a Leinster and All-Ireland. Everything that he can win, he'll be trying to do it. And, you know, the best of luck to him and we'll see how it goes. What's the reaction been like over the last few weeks then as people have sort of got used to the idea down in Kilkenny that Henry, Henry's gone in with Galway? Yeah, sure, listen, he's a god in Kilkenny. Like, there's no point in saying otherwise. He's been fantastic, I suppose, ambassador for Kilkenny Hurling, for Ballyhale Hurling all his life. So everyone's just wishing him the best of luck and... Just hopefully when they play Kilkenny, he won't have as much luck as he had against the other counties. Hmm. But no, listen, they wish him the best luck. There's no, we'll say, disappointed, I suppose, that, you know, that he's not with a, a Kilkenny team, you know, because you don't want to lose your best. But um, he's gone there. And I think out of, you know, loyalty and how great he has been to the, the hurling in Kilkenny, the people just wish him the best of luck. Uh, we saw Waterford, uh, sorry, we saw Limerick win the pre-season competition uh, with what was you know a real rotation of players, second, third string players, getting an opportunity, taking their opportunity. As we head in towards the league, how are Tip and Waterford and Galway are going to approach it? Because it feels as though Limerick are at that level that, that Dublin were at a few years back, that York and Kenny side, where you're looking at league games and thinking, are they trying to win the game in front of them? Or are they trying to come up with a game plan that can deal with Limerick come the summer? Yeah, um, I think Limerick are definitely far ahead of the, the pack at the moment, Nathan. Um, as you said, like I was looking at their team, they kind of had one, uh, I know they had four starters, basically they had one main player on every line uh, against Clare last weekend for, for that Munster Cup final. Um, you know, they had Barry and Ash and a few more. And I think when you're bringing on young players, you have to bring them beside season campaigners. So when they're playing beside these guys, It'll make them play better. They'll get better ball to be able to play better. And like I think they've won 11 titles under John Kiley. They're just a machine at the moment. If you look at their age profile, they're very, you know, Gray Mulcahy is probably, you know, one of the only older players probably on the team. And I think he scored seven or eight points in the Limerick County final this year. So they have players in form, playing with the confidence of their lives. Limerick are waiting from 1973 to 2018 to win in All-Ireland. So they have that hunger of the whole county. They don't want to let this go. Um, they're starting to bring on, you know, young Coughlin played the weekend. He's half back, another big, strong six foot two, six foot three man. So they are a machine, um, and everyone has to play catch up. 
I think the half hour line, if 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 the if the opposing counties can take on their half hour line, and that's mostly it's probably Keen Lynch, Tom Morrissey yeah, and Garrod Hegarty, if they can take on them and there's no point in just defeating one of them, you have to defeat all three of them to to have a chance of beating Limerick. That's the the key. Who are the contenders? I was looking at it all day. I think the rest of the contenders are in the same. There's no tier one, tier two, three. Tier they could three. all beat each yeah. other. I think they're all roughly the same. You've right. got to be kind of, you know, a few guys, their main players coming probably to the 29, 30 year age bracket. Joe Canning's gone. You know, Aiden Hart is gone. You have Cork probably coming with a young team. Um, they're, you know, in transition, if you like. Uh, Kilkenny then, you know, I suppose Tej, a few lads at, at the 33, 34 years of age. So, there have a lot of teams, I think, in the one bracket playing catch-up. And um, you'd imagine Watford, they seem to be the team on the rise. But listen, I don't see much in the difference between any of the counties there, you know, just down from Limerick. I think, myself, there'll be a few, looking at the league coming forward, there'll be a few great matches. Derby, Skilkenny and, you know, Tipperary and Turles. Mm. Colin Bonner is over over um, Tipperary. That'll be exciting. He'll probably go to the, the old school. There'll be plenty of heart. There'll be plenty of old I know... A lot of the Kilkenny guys played under Colin Bonner in WIT. Great man to build a spirit around the place. So you can imagine they will be playing with the, the tip heart, the tip firepower. So it's going to be exciting. Um, Limerick and Clare are always great games. You know, you have Brian Law on there on, on the line. Like, sure, he rises the whole Clare crowd as it is. So he won't be afraid of Limerick. So, yeah, no, it's going to be a great campaign. And we'll see yeah. how it goes. It, like, it is pretty ominous uh, what they were even doing in pre-season and obviously the way they went and won the All-Ireland last year it doesn't feel like there's any risk of complacency with them at all and the comparisons to your great Kilkenny side will come up did you ever sense at any stage during those years that there was a risk of complacency in Kilkenny? Uh, no because Brian Cody tree complacency like a disease like it just was stamped out straight away um, if we had a meeting in November December you were there and that was it so I just set the standard for the whole year ahead. But you can probably, it's far easier to do that if you have subs coming on. And that Limerick team, they know they're going to be in and around the All-Ireland Finals, Munster Finals, League Finals. So they have five or six subs that have come on in every match. You have Pat Ryan, you know, Peter Casey on and off the team. You know, he has dropped big names. Uh, you know, Dan Morrissey last year. Um, Aaron Galan you know, Dierma Burns was fighting the hard Aaron Galan you know so they know that they're not indispensable to that team and that fires them on uh, Before we let you go who's your favourite player in the game at the moment Tommy? Who do you love watching? Favourite player uh, at the moment say outside of Kilkenny um, if we go for an outsider um, Limerick my favourite player would be Kyle Hayes Right yeah, Kyle is just absolute animal. Fred and Norton goes back from Norton, and just a joy to watch. Like you know, um, Cork Hoggy genius. I suppose I, I played Shinty with Hoggy, with uh, roamed him up the north, like and seen how good he was in that Shinty. And I think when you have kind of close contact with a player, then you kind of see how good they really are. And Hoggy has done it for Glenover for so many years as well. So them two players will be top of my list. I'd say. Uh, you can call one of the chickens Kyle then. <laughs> Tommy, they have on. names already. What? Ah, what, are the, what are the chickens called? Ah, not telling you. Ah, Tommy, come on! You're saving it for later in the summer. You got it. Have you got I'll one? Tell you have Christmas you, party. Th- yeah, exactly. Yeah, we might get one for one. So I was going to say you can uh, you can put one up for uh, uh, to be named by the off the ball listeners. The chickens have names already. <laughs> Bloody hell! I tell you, That's I if they're still around. Well, well, this is this is the worry when you start talking about animals in this loving way, Tommy. That as we go through the year and go through the summer, there might be an awkward conversation some evening. <laughs> at least they're not turkeys eh? Tommy great stuff uh, as always thanks for joining us and a reminder again uh, about Hurling for Hope and it's raising money for the Mayo Ross Common Hospice Foundation the Irish Mother Neuron Disease Association soloing a hurling ball from uh, Mayo Ross Common Hospice in Castle Bar through Claremorris Ballyhonis and Castlery finishing in Ross Common 100 kilometres, all happening in March and get on to idonate.ie and search for Hurling for Hope and get involved in that great stuff Tommy Rest off, Nathan. Best of luck.